I'm, I'm in favor of uh, execution. Maybe, maybe our entire team needs to be executed after tonight. So I know the Selena patch is still fairly recent at the time that I'm pushing out this video, but I gotta cover Pula as well, so here we are. Anyways, I want to cover the next patch since there's a lot of major updates coming to the game, and I'll give some information as well as clear any misconceptions about it. In this video, we're going to cover Transcendent and Construct team mixing, the character upgrade ascensions, Transcendent execution and evasion attack upgrade system, and the Operation Unique in game mode. And as usual, if you don't want to miss future PGR guys' videos, don't forget to subscribe, and also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash spider2b, and if you make any corrections or forget to mention something, it'll be in the pinned comment down below. Of course, I'll add timestamps if you want to jump to a specific topic, but they're all equally important in my opinion. I know that many people were looking forward to this patch since Transcendence can now be slot into the same team as Constructs, so you could theoretically have like a full call me team, not that I recommend it though. But this team mixing doesn't come without drawbacks. For one, each Construct added to the team will reduce the Transcendent attack by 30%, so don't go dropping your Astro for call me just yet. In order to compensate for the loss of attack, a Transcendent needs to have their base stats be around triple S to negate this debuff. And this is on top of the fact that even if you can place Transcendence in place of Constructs, a lot of time you won't need to or want to since often Constructs are designed to synergize with each other. But there are a few outliers that can break this mold. The Transcendent and team that gains the most from this is Selena Tempest and the Lightning team. The basic reason being that Bianca Veritas specifically needs to swap an attack or 3 orb matrix red ping directly into a blue orb ping to trigger her core passive. While Selena Tempest doesn't really care what order or color the orb is, as long as they are 3 orb or matrix pings. In order for Selena Tempest to compete with the signature weapon double S Bianca Veritas, Selena must be triple S with her signature weapon and properly invested, so hypertuned bottom row and resonated. It costs about the same amount of black cards to achieve a double S signature weapon Bianca Veritas or a triple S signature weapon Selena Tempest. But Selena doesn't really care about specific orb color RNG, and her ultimate has a larger AoE compared to Bianca. Bianca does have some very slight advantages like being a ranged damage dealer and having a custom crane pet passive, but both can utilize the crane pet well despite the passive being tailor made for Bianca Veritas. So does this mean that you should trash your Bianca Veritas and go for more copies of Selena Tempest in her weapon? Not usually, no. For most people, you already have an invested Bianca Veritas, and it's not worth sinking another s rank construct plus signature weapon worth of black cards for a slight quality of life and damage increase. But for people who don't have Veritas yet, you can consider getting Selena instead since she is always available at an 80% rate up and is a lot more consistent to use. But let's be real, Vera Garna is doing most of the heavy lifting for the Lightning team anyways. Another transcendent that could break this mold is Roland. I know that a lot of people ask about using Roland to supplement as a fire DPS for the fire team, and you can technically do this with the same investment as I mentioned with Selena earlier, so triple S, signature weapon, hypertune bottom row, and resonated, but it's just not worth it due to Mechanonomy being the patch right after, a fire tank who has her own custom set as well as fire team debuffs that Roland just doesn't have. And with Mechanonomy and Liv's signature sets being so strong, as well as them hogging a lot of the field time, you want the third member to run Da Vinci instead to buff them. Except that Roland's transcendent, so he can't really hold a Da Vinci set. But you know who can hold the 4-piece Da Vinci set? Lee Pillfire, who's getting a character upgrade ascension, the patch after, or Nanami Pulse, or Karenina Amber. So if you have a super invested triple S Roland, you would either have to run Mechanonomy or Live Amp as a Da Vinci holders, which is just not worth it in terms of loss and debuffs and buffs or damage, in my opinion. The other transcendents also don't really have an upgrade over their attacker counterparts, you wouldn't really use Kamu over Luna for example, and in terms of their kit, damage and synergy and ease of use is just not worth it. Next, let's talk about Construct Upgrade Ascensions. This is basically Kuro Games' way of revamping older constructs to bring them closer or up to par with the current newer constructs. Notice that these character upgrade ascensions are not free and will require a sizable amount of serum investment to unlock and level these upgrades. The upgrades include Ultimate Ascension, Core Passive Ascension, and either QTE Ascension for base S ranks or Orb Ascension for base A ranks. But you'll need to unlock them first. This requires 10 skill points, 45 of the yellow vials, which can be obtained from the event shop with serum or given as event rewards, and 15 of the specific character upgrade shards, which are mainly obtained through events, but can be obtained through BP or Warzone currency. Once initially unlocked, each ascension has three different passives that can be unlocked at different levels, costing mainly cogs and some skill points. The second tier is available at level 9, and the final tier is available at level 18, which is the max level. Every tier costs the same amount of resources, as I mentioned earlier, to unlock, and the levels in between each tier cost 5 yellow vials, 2 skill points, and 75k cogs to level up. 
And other than reaching the next tier, these level ups increase the passive effect of the skill itself, like increased core passive procs for Dawn. Speaking of Dawn, let's quickly talk about her upgrade ascension coming in the upcoming Wandering Dream update. Her orb ascension basically gives her damage, some grouping, and a basic attack hold dash after 3 orb red ping. Her core passive ascension basically adds damage and makes it more consistent, and her ult ascension basically gives her more consistent ult uptime even when she swapped out. Now do these changes make her power creep Bianca Veritas or even triple S Selena Tempest? No, not by a long shot. But it's at least a nice damage and quality of life update for those who like using Dawn. Of course, other characters will be getting them later on, like Lee Palefire, which I've already covered in his YouTube short guide, Astral, Vera Rosen, and two more meta-shifting updates which are S Live Luminance and Rosetta, which I'll cover when their upgrade ascensions arrive. Basically, these upgrade ascensions are usually made to vastly improve a construct's quality of life, team synergy, and add a bit of extra damage in the process. You should only invest in this if you use the character and are willing to invest a significant amount of serum, because you'll want to unlock and max upgrade all the skills to get the full improvement of the character. Transcendence will now specialize against new executable enemies. During the next patch, PGR will introduce new enemies that have an execution gauge under the regular health bar, indicated in orange. Dealing damage with Transcendence will reduce its execution gauge, and when it disappears, Transcendence that have the execution skill unlocked, or Trial Transcendence that already have executions enabled, will be able to basic attack to execute enemies regardless of what their existing health bar is at. Roland and the upcoming Transcendent Pulau will be the first Transcendence to unlock the Execution and Evasion attack skills to shred these enemies. The Evasion attack skill allows you to hold dodge after an executable enemy attacks to retaliate with a counterattack, dealing significant damage to the Execution gauge. To unlock the Evasion attack skill or Execution skill, it costs 30 character cubes, which is mainly obtained from events, but its components can be obtained from BP or Warzone currency, 40 Transcendent coins, which is mainly obtained by spending serum or from some event rewards, 10 skill points, and 250k cogs. Yeah, I know, it's a lot of cogs. But you only have to unlock the skill once, unlike the character upgrade ascensions. Leveling the evasion attack or execution skills costs 10 transcendent coins, 5 skill points, and 60k cogs per level, and reaching level 9 and 18 will increase the shred of the execution gauge when attacking by 10 and 20% respectively. Next are the subskills. Bringing the evasion attack skill to level 9 will let you unlock the evasion upgrade skill that procs after you do a successful evasion attack. The exact skill effect varies depending on the Transcendent, but it usually includes more AoE damage for newer Transcendents. Maxing the Execution skill to level 9 will let you unlock the Execution upgrade skill that procs after you do a successful execution, and the skill's exact effect really depends on the Transcendent. Finally, the team buff skill can be unlocked after the main Execution and Evasion attack skills both reach level 18. Depending on the Transcendent, they can unlock from one of two different skills. Rollins, for example, has a sub-skill where after any Transcendent on the team executes an enemy, it heals the active transcendent for 20% of their HP and gives their corresponding element a 10% damage buff for 15 seconds. And Pula has the other sub skill where after any transcendent on the team executes an enemy, it buffs the transcendent class skill by 50% for 15 seconds. For those who forgot, the transcendent class skill gives swapped in transcendents a 20% damage buff and HP shield for 10 seconds. And to unlock the sub skills, it requires 25 character cubes, 75 transcendent coins, 30 skill points, and 400k cogs. Yeah, I know, that's even more cogs. But you only need to unlock it once, and they don't need to be low. So, with all these upgrades, which one should you prioritize? Well, first the execution skill, second the evasion attack skill, and unlocking the sub skills is honestly up to you. Personally, I try to get both versions of the team buff skills, but you should be able to clear even Norman EX6 or Babel Transcendent stages with just the evasion attack and execution skill unlocked and leveled. The main way you get character cubes is through the new Operation Unique in game mode. Like Norman, during A rank or Transcendent debut patches, the Operation Unique in game mode will make an appearance for a couple weeks where you can choose a beginner or an advanced difficulty, just like Norman. The advance is really not that hard though, and you can use Trials Transcendence. This game mode features three different elemental stages that are time gated, and you can use your own Transcendence or Trial ones, but using the proper element Transcendence will shred the execution gauge much faster. Each stage has 3 levels to clear, with the last stage being a longer stage with multiple waves of enemies and a boss at the end. And after you finish all 3 levels in this stage, it locks all the constructs and transcendents used to clear them. Think of it sort of like Pancake. But once all the side stages are unlocked, the center final stage will be available. And all units that you already used in the side stages will be used in the center final stage. In battle, each execution or evasion attack will greatly increase the style meter, indicated on the left, increasing the score multiplier and you need to reach a certain score threshold to gain all the rewards. And yeah, I think that covers the major additions coming in the Wandering Dream of Whale patch. Man, try saying that dream that fast. 
There's a lot of details, so if there's any updates or corrections, I'll leave a pinned comment down below. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, or ask the GigaChat community discord at discord.io slash and I'll try to respond if I'm free. Subscribe so you don't miss future guided videos, and if you find this video informative, drop a like, and dislike if you didn't. I stream sometimes on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash spider 2 so drop a follow you want to know when I go live. And yeah, I hope I didn't go through all this too fast and bore out too many people with all the details, but hopefully this guide helps you allocate your serum for the next patch. And thanks as always for watching, you beautiful DGEMs, and peace later.